I'm going to read a poem called Writing Ellen West. Writing Ellen West was exorcism. Exorcism of that thing within Frank that wanted after his mother's death to die. Inside him was that thing that he must expel from him to live. He read the case of Ellen West as a senior in college and immediately wanted to write a poem about it, but couldn't, so he stored it, as he has stored so much that awaits existence. Unlike Ellen, he was never anorexic, but like Ellen, he was obsessed with eating and the arbitrariness of gender and having to have a body. Ellen lived out the war between the mind and the body, lived out in her body each stage of the war, its journey and progress, in which compromise, reconciliation is attempted, then rejected, then mourned, until she reaches at last in an ecstasy costing not less than everything, death. He was grateful he was not impelled to live out the war in his body, hiding in compromise, well wadded with art he adored and with stupidity and distraction. The particularity inherent in almost all narrative, though contingent and exhausting, tells the story of the encounter with particularity that flesh as flesh must make. Ellen West was written in the year after his mother's death. By the time she died, he had so thoroughly betrayed the ground of intimacy on which his life was founded, he had no right to live. No use for him to tell himself that he shouldn't feel this because he felt this. He didn't think this, but he thought this. After she died, his body wanted to die, but his brain, his cunning, didn't. He likes narratives with plots that feel as if no one wills them. His mother, in her last year, revealed that she wanted him to move back to Bakersfield and teach at Bakersfield College and live down the block. He thought his mother, without knowing that this is what she wanted, wanted him to die. All he had told her in words and more than words for years was that her possessiveness and terror at his independence were wrong, wrong, wrong. He was the only person she wanted to be with, but he refused to live down the block. And then she died. It must be lifted from the mind must be lifted and placed elsewhere, must not remain in the mind alone. Out of the thousand myriad voices, thousand myriad stories in each human head, when his mother died, there was Ellen West. This is the body that you can draw out of you to expel from you the desire to die. Give it a voice. Give each scene of her life a particularity and necessity that in Binswanger's recital are absent. And to her skin, so that you can then make her other and expel her. Survive her. Animal mind, eating the ground of Western thought, the mind-body problem. She, who in the last months of her life abandoned writing poems in disgust at the failure of her poems, is a poem. She in death is incarnated on a journey whose voice is the voice of her journey. Arrogance of Plutarch, of Shakespeare and Berlioz, who thought they made what Cleopatra herself could not make. Arrogance of the maker. Verda killed himself, and then young men all over Europe imitated him and killed themselves. But his author, Goethe, cunning master of praxis, 
lived. Frank thought when anything is made, it is made not by its likeness, not by its twin or mirror, but its opposite. Ellen, in his poem, asks, without a body, who can know himself at all? In your pajamas, you move down the stairs, just to the point where the adults couldn't yet see you, to hear more clearly the din, the sweet cacophony of adults partying, phonograph voices among them, phonograph voices, their magpie beauty. Sweet din, magpie beauty. One more poem, one more book, in which you figure out how to make something out of not knowing enough. Thank you. Thank you.